All right, I'm with Isabel for today's NQAT Daily. We're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming match against Newcastle on Wednesday night and uh, also Rafa Varane, who announced he's leaving the club. No surprise. First, Izzy, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, doing all right. The sun is out here and uh, that's nice, yeah. isn't it? You know, it's, uh, I live in part of the world, well, as, as you do really, where it rains uh, a lot. And so when you get some sun, everyone Definitely. feels a lot better. We need it. <laughs> we do. So will Rafa Baran be heading off somewhere sunny? Because uh, he's announced today, did a nice little video announcing that he's leaving the club after three years. No surprise, I think. Yeah, I definitely think, yeah, like you said, it's, it's not a surprise. I think we all saw it come in. Um, I definitely think more will follow as well this summer. So where he goes, we don't know. But um, I think it's I think it's time for Varane to leave, definitely. Yeah, I was looking at his stats. He's had three years yeah. at United and averaged about 25 full 90s per season across all competitions, which which kind of says something like he's missed like over 40% of United's games in that time. So that's really his quality, undoubted amount of quality, at least in the kind of traditional defending sense, maybe not in the possession sense, like undoubted quality, which just never that's, fits. Yeah. And so... Massive wages plus never fit. Not a good right. deal, really. I mean, what's new? That's kind of the thing at Manchester United at the minute, isn't it? But no, it's a shame about Varane because he is a good player. Um, he's proven it throughout his whole career. And uh, yeah, just a shame that he wasn't more fit for us, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's not a surprise. He had quite a poor injury record at Madrid. This is just yeah. even worse and probably going to get worse now if they gave him another contract. Definitely. Right? Maybe this is a sign of the times the new team coming in in the past, I, I wonder whether they'd have given him an extension because it's cheaper than buying a new player. Yeah, possibly. I think this summer we all know we need to sign lots and lots of players. And I do think, you know, this is the start of getting some of these older players out. So, look, I think it was time for Varane to leave as well. So I think it's I think it's the right call. Yeah. I, I Yeah, yeah. I, I, I Yes. Probably, yes. Unless he took a deal that was like much, much reduced wages and was happy to be third or fourth choice or something like that. But clearly, clearly that's, you know, it's going to suit all parties. And I think we are going to see quite a revolution. It's an interesting kind of debate how much money United have actually got this summer, because I, re I really think it's probably less than 100 million um, with the FFP ceiling in theory. But if you get a few sales, especially if it's Greenwood because uh, it's an academy prospect that's right that's on the FFP calculation straight away. Um, and also United can play the same sort of uh, amortization game that Chelsea do. So in theory, you could extend that 100 million to three or 400 million, as long as they don't spend any money in the next three years or they make lots more money. So I don't know. I, either way, I think there's probably quite a big revolution coming this summer. I mean, it feels like it, doesn't it? There's, and it's oh, needed. Definitely. I think we definitely need to bring in like you said, if we do have that just 100 million, we've got to, you know, invest wisely and make sure we're getting some younger players because they're going to be cheaper technically. Um, but also just some players that are good. I think we bought in Malassia. Um, I don't know how much he cost, but I know it wasn't a lot compared to other players. Oh, my, um, yeah. And I think Malassia is a good player. I definitely think we need to invest in some more younger players for the future um, who are a bit cheaper and that we can work into Ten Hag style if Ten Hag's staying on. Um, definitely, yeah. That's a big question, isn't it? Uh, the the other one who's been mentioned a fair bit recently, which is interesting, also Telegraph piece this morning saying that Bruno Fernandes may be tempted to leave and that Bayern Munich, because Tuchel may stay mm -hmm. at Bayern now because they can't find anyone else. Hansi Flick apparently turned them down, as did Uncle Ralph. Um, so if he stays and he's interested in a playmaker and Bruno wants to win some trophies... It'd be a big fee. It should be yeah. a big fee. You know, player prime of his career. What do we think of that? I mean, if it was, I don't know, north of 50 million or something. Yeah, I mean, we've just got to invest the money wisely. I think if Bruno does leave, I think I'd be surprised. But I don't hate it because I do think, you know, we need to have, like you said, a revolution this summer. There needs to be a lot of change at Manchester United. And if that means that Bruno does have to go, then so be it. I don't hate it, to be honest. I think Bruno's a class player and if he wants to go to Munich I, I don't hate it I think it'd be a good move for him to be honest just got to invest the money wisely and make sure we buy some good players this summer 
Well, that's it. I mean, it's the creative output that is hard to replace, isn't it? And uh, I, I do like, I mean, if we're talking about you know Germany, I do like Florin, but I don't know whether we could get him out of the Bundesliga and he'd be really expensive, but he is, um, he's, he's kind of Bruno like in his creative output, but perhaps, um, perhaps a bit slightly stronger on the defensive side, although marginally. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, that, that's the news. We've got Newcastle game tomorrow night. I don't know what to make of this one because in, in theory, there's actually something riding on this because there's a European place potentially riding on it. So it should mm-hmm. matter, but I'm finding it quite hard to get up for this one and excited about it because it feels like a I know that's rubber. the thing. I think we're coming towards the end of the season and I think we're all just waiting for it to end. I know I am. I'm thinking... I'm not even focused on the Premier League games, to be honest. I'm more focused on this final that we've got. Um, But even then, I think the season is pretty much over. Obviously, of course, I'd like a European place. But it's just how realistic is that? I can't really see us getting any points. Obviously, we are at Old Trafford tomorrow. um, So in theory, you know, we should should be getting a point at least. Um, But I just think Newcastle as well, they're in good form recently. Um, but both teams started off, I mean, Manchester United and Newcastle both started off a little bit rough. I think we both had a similar run in terms of we both had a lot of injuries um, and the season's has kind of not gone to plan as much as we'd like. But I think Newcastle, you know, they'll be up for it. They want a European place, definitely. I think they're sixth right now. We're eighth. Um, so they're looking more likely for this European spot. So look, they'll be up for it tomorrow. That's just, I hope we are as well. I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? Yeah. They've got a game in hand as well, I think I'm right in saying that. So, I mean, ball's in their court, yeah. I suppose. I, I, I do think it matters. I mean, the Conference League doesn't really generate mm-hmm. any money. So financially, it's not really worth it. I suppose you can make an argument saying if we're in the Conference League, you could play a lot of younger players, Definitely. especially in the group stage, which is unending <laughs> now in the new format. Um, so yeah, that may be an option. I, I don't like financially, it's barely worth it apart from some home games. So, you know, what you might know, make five million a home game or something like that. But I think there would be four home games. There's an extra one, isn't there? And then whatever you make in the later rounds and plus some TV money, but not much. So I don't know. It's marginal. Uh, you could work out work with a smaller squad next year if there's no European football or play younger players. If there is Europa League. It's actually, it's you know the pool of money yeah. is decent. It would help United's coefficient, which really does matter when it comes to Champions League football, and um, and it's a higher quality standard. But I don't think we're going to make the Europa League unless we beat City in the cup final. That's the thing. I think. I mean, I definitely don't think you know if we got Champions League next season. I know it's not going to happen now, but let's say we did, for example. I just, there would be no point because we're not going to get anywhere in the Champions League. I'd much rather us have Europa League anyway. We might not even get Europa League by the looks of it. So I definitely think, you know, whichever competition we go in, we've got to make the most of it. And like you said, if we do, you know, get the Conference League, financially it's not great, but we might get the chance to, you know, work the team in a bit and and hopefully, you know, if we do have some young players come in, get them into the team. And I think this next season we've got to focus on getting the team together I think Newcastle especially going into this match I'm thinking about Newcastle are a good team together they play they play well together and you know Arsenal do a lot of our recent matches what I've noticed is all the teams that we're playing against they're a very good group they play very together and we kind of don't and I think next season that's something that we have to focus on so look if we do get conference league I think that's that's the main focus getting this team working well together definitely yeah, I mean, no, it's it's the yeah. right observation. I mean, they're obviously well coached. I don't like to say it about Eddie Howe because he's a bit of a dick, honestly. <laughs> and uh, I, I, you know, but they're a good, they're a well coached team. They have suffered with a lot of injuries. In fact, uh, Alexander Isaac may not be fit for this one, which would be great because he's obviously a very high yeah. class forward. Um, he would do well mm-hmm. at United. Um, not going to happen. Um, let's talk about him going to Arsenal, but it'd take a, a massive fee, clearly. Um, so yeah, they, they are well coached. Uh, I think you see the, really see the benefit of that, you know, City, Liverpool, Villa, Arsenal, all top quality coaches, Newcastle, hmm. Chelsea, you're seeing the benefit of the potch. It's taken a while with him, but you know what he produces in terms of teams and that's finally yeah. happening. I mean, it would be shocking if Chelsea finished above United, that would really be damning. And, and United, yeah, they don't look like. Uh, there was a report earlier this week saying 
that uh, Ten Hag has them watching 30 to 40 minute tactical videos like three times a week. And I'm like, well, I believe that story. It said he never does any tactical videos because like it doesn't look like they spend a lot of time building patterns of play no. on the training field. I'm sure they do, but it's it doesn't not look like on the pitch, it. is it? <laughs> That's for sure. No, I mean, I, like on uh, against Arsenal, I, I guess, you know, against the best defence in the league, possibly in Europe, it's not surprising I didn't create much and with three younger players up front. But they don't look like they're a group. They're three brilliant individuals and it was all about individual moments. So, yeah, there's a lot to go there. It's, it's probably, for me, the most damning thing about Ten Hag's sort of time that after two years... It doesn't matter if they're injuries. Should be able to slot another player in. Might not be as good, but we should know what kind of style United play. And We never yeah. look certain in what we're uh, doing. No. And what do you think we'll see? Because against Arsenal, it was pretty defensive, really. It was like defend solidly. They stuck Amrabat in there to sort out, help yeah. the defence out. And then they tried to play on the break. Yeah. More proactive this time against Newcastle. <sighs> to be honest... I think I think we'll see probably the same. I think Amrabat will play. And I don't hate that because I actually, I rate Amrabat. I do think he's good. I watched him for Morocco in the World Cup and I thought it was very good. And when I heard he was coming to United, I was really excited. And we've just not seen Amrabat this season. Um, so I think, I think it was probably one of his better performances. And I do think Ten Hag will play the same. I don't, you know, what else is he going to do? I don't, unfortunately, I don't think he's that, you know, creative manager to, you know, switch it up within a couple of days. I think he's going to play the exact same. I think Amrabat will play and I think we'll we'll do the same, you know, try and break and defend well. Um, and it kind of worked. I think Delo had a very good game as well. Delo and Amrabat were definitely, I think, two of the best players on the pitch against Arsenal. But we'll see. It's difficult, isn't it? Yeah, and Newcastle exactly. play the same way, so it might not be that much of an exciting game if United do play like that. I mean, it's, it's weird because they... they you know, went to this transitional form of football that was super open all the time and the bet that was that we'd score one more than the opposition and gave up a lot of chances and then suddenly against Arsenal changed up the style. And Amrabat, I, I, just, I mean, I didn't think when he came that he was that yeah. good a player. I thought he looked okay in a Morocco side that was defensive. Um, but every time I'd seen him for Fiorentina, I thought he was kind of right. good on the ball but mediocre at everything else. And... Um, you know, it was a loan. He won't stay next season. But in that kind of limited role, the water carrier sitting in front of the defence, he gave United some more solidity. We didn't actually concede a lot of chances against Arsenal. Yeah. Uh, and 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 so I, like, I don't hate that as a uh, like way of getting around the injury problems and practicality for now. Uh, That's what it is, like, isn't it? I think if we, yeah. yeah, I think if we'd played like that for the last six months, we'd probably have ten more points and we'd be challenging Villa and Tottenham. Like honestly, and and I could complain about how like the boring style we were playing, rather yeah. than uh, the more exciting but um, exciting style that leads to a lot. I of know, losses, that's the thing; so. it's been so disruptive that we've just not had any consistency. So, like you said, we could have, you know, if we played this how we were playing against Arsenal for the last couple months, we might have had some more points. But it's just it's so inconsistent, and obviously the injuries, you know, have caused this. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't think much will happen in tomorrow's match. I think I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, I get. I guess on team selection, unclear whether Bruno will be fit or not. Uh, it looks like Marcus Rashford and Maguire won't be ready until the cup final. And Malasia, not Malasia, Martinez has been training. It'd be interesting if they want to give him some minutes because it's only this one and Brighton before the cup final, and they've got to get some minutes somehow if they're thinking about playing him. Um, so maybe he comes on as sub. And Luke Shaw has been training. Not sure if he's ready yet. And Martial's training as well. Uh, get him a couple of minutes, score the winner against City in the cup final, and then he can leave in the summer. I was going to say, a couple of positives, definitely getting them back in the team. I think um, I think Martinez was fit ahead of the Arsenal match, but I think Ten Hag had, um, mentioned that he didn't want him to play. So I think he will, I think he's going to be on the bench um, ahead of this match. I don't think he'll start. I don't think he should start. But um, I do hope Martinez gets some minutes. But obviously, you know, we, the worst thing to happen would be he comes on and gets injured again. So you've got to work in these injured players slowly, mm. I definitely think. But I, I want to see Martinez in the final. I really do. So if he's fit, I'd, I'd play him. Yeah. 
Ten Hag said this. He he said you've got to manage the injured players and bring them back slowly. And I was like, I don't. I, I mean, he's right, but I don't believe him because he's he's brought Varane back after an injury. He brought Luch, he, Lucho had to come off at half time, was injured, came back in the next game, got injured again. I was like, you're not managing these players. Uh, injuries. So I, I didn't really believe him when he said that. And he's been prepared to use some players, overload them, mm-hmm. uh, Bruno, clearly. Uh, and there's been a lot of talk about the intensity of training. And maybe that's a factor in the uh, the injury. So I, I wasn't quite sure I believed him when he said that. But he did say it. And he's right. Yeah, it's a difficult one. I think it's kind of the desperation of he wants to bring these players back. And then he's as he's brought them back, he's probably realised actually that he shouldn't have brought them back. And now he's, you know, making these comments. But um it is what it is, isn't it? With Ten Hag at the minute, he, he's been he's been more bullish lately. Ten Hag, and it feels if he had charisma, I'd go, yeah, okay, fine. He's just he's being bullish yeah. about things, but he doesn't, so it feels quite defensive. That's what he can't pull it off in the same way. Yeah, like I know. Can. My dad is like watching Ten Hag in these press conferences. He's always saying we need someone with charisma at Manchester United, and Ten Hag just hasn't got that charisma. And I think he's, I think it's right. You know, we do need someone with a bit of something. Even, you know, Jose Mourinho was a bit like that. And you just, I think you need someone. Because with the media at Manchester United, you've got to be ready for what you're going to face. And I don't think Ten Hag's quite there yet. Um, but... No, uh, I mean, he's not. You're, you're right. Like, if you think of all the managers we've had post-Fergie, yeah. obviously Fergie's had, had charisma and Fergie had an aura about him. That yeah, everyone, um, well, yeah, I think mean, you just wouldn't allow anyone to challenge him anyway. But if you think about the managers post Fergie Moyes, zero charisma, just in, like he was rubbing the headlights, mm-hmm. never going to work. Van Hal, charisma, but arrogant and stubborn. Mourinho, tons of charisma. Oli, even yeah. Oli, he knows, like, it's not, it's not just about knowing the club. He's confident in his own yeah. skin, Oli. I, I thought the, the PE teacher thing was always deeply unfair uh, about him. He, he knew what he was about. Um, and then, yeah, Ten Hag zero. He's a technocrat. Yeah, you kind of if he was an accountant or something, you wouldn't be surprised, no. would you? No. <laughs> Sorry to accountants. So, all right, we'll leave it there. Oh, God, I'm not sure what to expect of this game. I can't. I, I I was surprised about how solid United were against Arsenal. I was expecting yeah, a battering, and so I guess that's affecting my thinking now. Recency bias. I'm like, oh, maybe we're not going to get battered and completely give up. So we'll I see. hope it's that. I hope I hope we we're able to get something out of this one. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone. We'll catch you on the next one. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.